In this video, we are going to connect Meraki and Splunk to import alerts in real time. Let's start with the platforms we are using today. The first platform is Cisco Meraki, an easy to use cloud managed networking IT and IoT solution that can scale up and down to cover business needs of customers of all sizes. It is best known for its user friendly graphical interface, but it also includes multiple APIs for a variety of integration and automation use cases. Today we will use one of these APIs, the Webhook Alerts APIs, for our integration. The other platform is Cisco Splunk, a powerful data platform. You can use it to achieve multiple outcomes, such as to increase security, optimize operational processes, or to make more informed business decisions. Splunk offers multiple ways to import data into it, including different file types, syslog, or HTTP events via the HTTP event collector. The last one is what we are using today. You can also find ready-made integrations for multiple solutions in the repository called Splunk Base. Some of these modules uh, you will find there are maintained by the Splunk team itself and some by third parties. We're not using apps in Splunk Base for our demo today. Instead, we are using an interface called the HTTP Event Collector in combination with a Splunk deployment model referred to as Splunk Enterprise, which is the one you can install in your own data center. As a system, uh, Splunk Enterprise consists of multiple components. The component where the data resides is called Splunk Core. On top of that, you can implement uh, different applications that will enable you to achieve your desired outcomes as separate components including SOAR and ITSI. The objective today is to import alerts from Meraki into Splunk Core. How you decide to use the imported data is entirely up to you. The data flow is going to look something like this. First, the device establishes a secure management tunnel to the Meraki dashboard. Through this tunnel, it can send telemetry data about its operation. The Meraki dashboard then collects this data and if it detects an alert-worthy event, it will raise the alert. The alert can be delivered by email, or in our case, a webhook, which is an HTTPS post. Splunk has an interface called the HTTP Event Collector, which is a listener for these types of events. Since the message source is the Meraki Cloud, which is located in the internet, it is important to secure the HTTP Event Collector interface, for example, by using NAT, and then HTTPS reverse proxy. A quick run through the different types of APIs in the Meraki platform to avoid confusion. As mentioned previously, Meraki includes multiple APIs for different use cases. When talking about Meraki APIs, the first one that often comes to mind is the RESTful dashboard API, which uses a polling based logic. You can send a request to it and receive an answer or perform an action. Another category of APIs are the ones based on webhooks or proactive HTTPS posts to a server of your choosing sourced from the Meraki cloud. The webhook alerts API uh, we are using today falls into this category. Finally, we have the MQTT APIs, which can provide real-time telemetry streams from a cloud managed device to your application. Cameras, sensors, and Wi-Fi access points can leverage these types of APIs to provide data about their surroundings in real time. The Webhook Alerts API is the one that we are using today. What we are also using are custom Webhook templates, which allow us to modify the headers and, and bodies of the messages that will be sent by dashboard. Webhook templates use a language called Liquid. We use these templates to format alerts in a way that is compatible with the Splunk interface we are using. On the Splunk side, we are using the HTTP event collector. It is a webhook listener running on port 8088 on your server at path services collector event. You can send JSON data to it using a specific body structure. You send an object with two properties, source type, which needs to have a value of underscore JSON and event, which includes the data you want to send. Authentication happens via a request header named authorization, which includes, uh, which needs to have a value of Splunk space 
followed by a token you create for yourself in the Splunk Enterprise UI. You can send all uh, you can read all about the HTTP uh, event collector, including additional options not discussed in this video, in the official documentation linked in the description below. Let's move on to configuration. First, let's configure the Splunk side. We will configure two things here. We will create an index and then we will create also a token in order to authenticate with the HTTP event collector. For the index, we go to settings, indexes, and we press the new index button. I will call this index Meraki alert. I will set a, a size limit for this index and I will save it. Now let's move on to the event collector configuration. I go to settings, data inputs, HTTP event collector. I create a new token and I will name, name this Meraki alert. We'll press next. In the settings I will select the source type and I want the source type to be underscore JSON. And in the allowed indexes I will add the Meraki alert index that was created in the previous step. After reviewing the settings I submit that. Make sure to copy the token value on the screen before leaving. Now the next thing I want to do is to configure the Meraki site. I navigate to the network that I want to enable the alerts for and I go to network wide alerts. The first thing I'm going to do here is create my webhook template. I click on the add or edit web, uh, webhook templates link. Now the easiest way to get started is to just select one of the default ones and modify the, uh, the take that as a base payload and modify it from there. So I will just click on the Meraki profile and in here I select everything and I copy it. Now as said before the structure of the uh, of the payload will need to be a very specific one for Splunk. So what I've done I've created the base structure here in my text editor. So these brackets here are going to include the the actual event data that I'm going to send to dashboard. So if I replace that with what I copied out of the Meraki dashboard, I should now have the correct format for this uh, this body. So what I do again, I select all, I copy it, and now I can go back to my web browser. I can press back, and then I can click the create template button, which will allow me to create a new template. In the liquid body, I will just paste the text that I took from my text editor. As a template name, I will give Splunk demo. Now the final thing that I need to do for my template to work is I will need to add the authentication data. So I will create a new header. The header name is going to be authorization. And the value is going to be Splunk space and then I paste my HTTP event collector key from my text editor. Now my template is ready to go, so I save it. Now I can go back to network-wide alerts. And the the uh, the template should be good to go. The next thing I want to do is to add an HTTPS server. I click the Add an HTTPS server button. I name my server Splunk, and I will give it 
the correct URL to connect to my server. As the payload template, I will select my newly created custom template. Now what I can do is I can send a test webhook. The webhook test st status says delivered. What I will do now is verify that it the data was really received in Splunk. Going back into Splunk, I will go to the search and reporting section. And in here I will add my index as a search parameter. And I'm only interested in the last few messages, so I'll select here last 15 minutes. And as you see, the test webhook was received successfully. So what I can now do is I can just use the receiver created for my alert. So I save this. And after this, what I can do is I can use it as a webhook receiver as an alert recipient and I can select some types of alerts uh, that I want to send to it.